Good afternoon. Pink here. December 6, 2013. 1.45 p.m. Pacific Time. And up next. This is by Kara St. Louis and it's dated November 27, 2013. Naked Transhumanism, Part 1. And this is a very long article, so I'll have to skip some of the uh, paragraphs in the interest of time, and I apologize for that. But you're very welcome to check out the entire article. I'm just going to go over the main thrust of the article for all of you. How many of you know about transhumanism? I bet a lot of you do. And you might find this interesting. I don't know. Let's see. Article 1 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU, 2000 states, that human dignity is inviolable. It must be respected and protected. In a highly information and communications technology based world, this fundamental human right and basic ethical principle is facing an increasing threat. The time during which I wrote The Sun Thief was obviously a breathless climb up a steep learning curve. Encountering chemtrails, geoengineering, aerosol weapons and such thorough research yielded so much data and she has a lot of information that's obvious from reading this article each discovery felt like a landmine each landmine blew up in some way in my heart in my head and in my hope for the future it was a scary unfolding and it wasn't long before I at least was convinced that there was yes a certain percentage of the population who would both be able to take in the magnitude of this crime and absorb and be convinced by the data that had been so painstakingly collected. I appeared to be one of them. This was the slice of the population whose attention had been got. They were already paying attention. They knew the science. They understood the science, not because they were that much smarter than everyone, but because it was a way of looking at the world that interested them. Digging continued and continues to yield data like an unstoppable avalanche like the falls at Niagara. However, there is only a thin slice of the population that wants this information in this way. New information presented just to these people is what we called in my house preaching to the choir. The choir was already convinced we needed to get the other 90% on board, and if not on board exactly, at least aware. I try in every interview I give and in every article I write to talk about every man. Fictionalizing my story was one of the ways I hoped to reach the broadest possible audience. Humans learn through story. I think that's one of the reasons I've had to fight the uphill battle against invisible forces meant to bury this story. And folks, again, this is a very long article, and this will be a long video. Just wanted to uh, caution you before I continue. I lecture, attend activist congresses, and continue to write articles trying to find better, more compelling, and more interesting ways to reveal what's happening to us getting beyond the choir. I want to talk to everyone I can on the other side and when people ask me what they can do that is my answer. Help raise the consciousness. That's all we need. Speaking to my publisher in Germany this morning confirmed for me that all of us who are trying to get beyond the choir are bringing the same things. Transhumanism, Morgellon syndrome, and all of the illnesses with which we find ourselves and our children saddled. Our children do not know that the way they feel is abnormal. They do not understand that the drugs they take, the neurological issues they struggle with, the depression, the chronic fatigue syndrome, sleeplessness, the chronic pain, none of these are to be expected. They are all environmental every one of these diseases and so many more they are attacks deliberate attacks on us lingering non-specific respiratory illnesses now the third largest killer in the United States 
In fact, there are a handful of categories with life-threatening information within each, all of which is so important that when I gave my last interview on the subject in Germany in mid-August, the task of boiling everything down to the most essential was overwhelming. Physiologically, it all falls under the heading of critical. Critical. And the fellow who translated the sun thief into German recently sat with a woman at a hospital in Berlin and talked to her about her Morgellon syndrome. I have included a set of photographs of some of the typical presentations of Morgellons at the bottom of the page. They are graphic. God help me. This is the part I like writing about the least. However, we all have children and they deserve to have a life. The attempted war in Syria provided the administration with the opportunity to state publicly that spraying poisons on your own people or any people is absolutely abhorrent and forbidden. I will not stop reminding the public of that. President Obama, September 4. First of all, I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. The world set a red line when governments representing 98% of the world's population said the use of chemical weapons are abhorrent and passed a treaty forbidding their use, even when countries are engaged in war. Before I go on, though, I want to state here and now that it is most certainly not the Chinese and the North Koreans and the Russians and all those other boogeymen we love to point to who are responsible for the heinous medical experiments raining down on us and the deliberate physiologically wrenching transformation we are undergoing. It's all of the above, including the United States of America. Do not kid yourself. These programs meant to use us as medical guinea pigs and ins insinuate chips and metals and biologicals and aerosol vaccines and viruses and submicron sized fibers and pseudo DNA into our very bodies. That's them and us. Never forget that or we're sunk. The other stuff is a distraction. The entities conducting this slow kill program are a hyper malevolent blend of corporation and government military which lacks a center. Read, the buck just doesn't stop because there is always someone further along in the circle to blame. One of the reasons there is always someone further along to which we can point to is that the sheer volume of biological medical experiments being performed on us from the atmosphere is staggering. The other thing I want to note for the record is as follows. NASA has issued a new cloud chart for use in the schools with stunning photos of new clouds. New? You mean like new kinds of water, new kinds of soil, huh? Or maybe they are just newly discovered like species of plants and bugs in the deepest Amazon. See video below. These are in fact chemtrail made Franken clouds. Cotton candy death. Old movies are being re-edited with chemtrails added to the skies. There are cloud appreciation societies, there really are everywhere, in which m members wax lyrical and poetic about these amazing new cloud formations. One can still look up if one is old enough and has not succumbed to the chemically induced dementias ravaging the population and see that something is very, very wrong in the heavens. Just look up to the sky. And there is what you will see, probably, on any given day. This is not normal. This is definitely not normal. I have seen people posting on Facebook the following. If you think this is a cloud, you need a brain transplant. One will see this scribbled under some very clearly natural checkerboard cloud formation or loop-de-loop, -loop, complete backflip, half-gainer of a chemtrail. 
Someone could write Kilroy was here in the sky and NASA would photograph it, slap it on a piece of plastic, and call it the newly discovered previously elusive Kilroy formation. Then the cloud appreciation folks would issue Ode to Kilroy or some such. Perhaps some of us would ooh and awe. How I wish I was kidding, and I'm not. So let's talk about the severe impact on our biology instead. The question is, how does all this happen? Because we absolutely must, we are discussing the ways our beautiful and already perfect human body reacts and breaks down and is transformed after being marinated without relent and without our consent in an atmosphere that has been turned into a dense, highly reactive electromagnetic conductor. The plasma we breathe is filled with ionized metallic salts, such as aluminum nanoparticles and barium nanoparticles, arsenic, cadmium, mercury fluoride. The list is long, up to and including human cells such as desiccated red blood cells. Often we see and smell sulfur, sulfur dioxide, which kicks oxygen off our neural receptors and makes us more compliant. The air we breathe should be what we term neutral, which simply means that chemistry, which is the most naturally conducive to health and life, it is no longer neutral air, but rather, as I have indicated, a metallic and conductive plasma. And how come, you ask? One could insert because of the CO2 here, and most folks, I think, would nod and smile. However, the other stuff in the atmosphere, the other stuff being rained down on us for no CO2 reason, no global warming reason whatsoever, well, this gives the lie to that now very pat answer. CO2 is not the problem. CO2 was never, ever the issue. Thousands and thousands of scientists have tried very hard to protest about this to Mr. Gore and to the rest of the world. This is about rather transforming human beings into something different, something other than human. I, for one, am not okay with that. We are going to talk about smart dust and lithium trails too. And what follows is a video which includes a recorded conversation with a NASA scientist who talk about the lithium in the air from at least the summer of 2013. They are dropping lithium on us, according to this NASA scientist, to understand how the wind blows. Lithium on us, in our lungs, in our soil, in our water, to try to find out how the wind blows at altitude. I encourage you to have a look. It is brief. Where one interested in reading about nanoparticles in general, especially the potential toxicity, one might want to have a look at the following and let it launch you into, into your own research. And you should do your own research, folks, if you haven't. Uh, a lot of you have, I know. A lot of you are very uh, well knowledgeable on chemtrails by now, but there are a lot of people that don't know. One does not breathe in a nanoparticle of anything without experiencing negative biological consequences. However, it is not the reader who will run with the research ball I aim my conversations at generally. It is the reader who needs to get plain information without being buried under an avalanche because that is absolutely counterproductive. Unfortunately, even the simplest, most plain explanation of why so many of us spend all of our time sounding the alarm, well, horrifyingly, there is no other way to put it. First, though, the very basics. Now that we know them and can talk about them sensibly, I want to acknowledge the work of Dr. Sophia Smallstorm here for distilling that avalanche of information down to something very manageable and understandable. In general, there are three major categories of material floating around in this air plasma, all of which goes into our very willing bodies. The material is designed to do so. We ingest it all one way or another. The categories are the following. Metallic salts, filaments, 
generally submicron sized and engineered biologicals. These categories have been identified using soil, air, and water samples collected across the planet. Heavy metals, metallic salt, same thing. Aluminum nanoparticles are a very prevalent example of one of these metallic salts. Barium is as well. The term ionizable metallic salt is very precise here and it means quite simply that this substance not only conducts electromagnetic impulses but in agglomeration creates a plasma that conducts electromagnetic energy. It's a plasma. Agglomeration, as you all probably know quite well, is simply the sticking together of smaller substances to make larger substances. These substances accumulate in the body, going in through the skin and into the lungs, since they are much smaller than, say, asbestos, which is illegal because inhaling particles as such makes one very, very ill. Many nanoparticles are accumulating in our bodies, agglomerating, and are much, much smaller than many substances which have been declared extremely hazardous, dangerous, and illegal because they will kill us. Bioaccumulation of aluminum, for example, leads to something we all know as Alzheimer's disease. I believe the first statistic came across regarding aluminum nanoparticles was one collected from snow on Mount Shasta. Levels were something like 120,000 times higher than acceptable. I let the characters in The Sun Thief demonstrate, explain, and live with the heavy metals. There is ample information out there at your fingertips if you want more. I recommend searching the name Mark McCandish my technical advisor on the book because he has recorded many many interviews on the subject and makes it very very understandable. I also recommend lectures by Sophia Smallstorm and my own interviews from Bewust TV in English and German. The interview is below for the interested. Once again, bioaccumulation of such makes the human body a nice conductor of electromagnetic impulses as well, all the way down to the DNA. Two things I hope you already are asking yourselves. One, since the geoengineering program is supposed to be about cooling the planet, or even protecting us from solar flares, why are we making the atmosphere conductive or conducive? Additionally, why are we making human beings conductive as well? And it's not conducive, folks, it's conductive. Pardon me for that. If you want to take it one step further, add the absolute fact that we are living on a planet that has been utterly saturated in E magnetic waves. Just take a look at the Gwen Tower on every corner, for example, emitting electromagnetic impulses ceaselessly at demonic levels. You probably have a lot of towers in your hometown, don't you folks? I know I do. The other thing I hope you want to know more about is the idea of bioaccumulation and what is it? Nanoparticles, for example, do agglomerate, meaning that they stick together, as we know, to make something much bigger. Imagine mucus gathering in lungs when you are ill. That is the agglomeration of a healing substance reaction to an infection. Some of what they are sending down we are, in effect, assimilating. Actually, one way or the other, our bodies are dealing with everything they are raining down on us and is making us very, very ill. What we don't assimilate, we excrete, which brings me to the nanofibers. And here's a photograph of nanofibers, Morgellons. Some of these unidentifiable fibers raining down on us are big enough to see with the naked eye, and some are submicron level, again. They do not exist in the natural world. We know about them largely, I believe, thanks to the poor souls with Morgellon syndrome and the identifier of this biological effect on humanity. Dr. Clifford Canacom in New Mexico who risked life and limb to bring it to humanity's attention. And that's Dr. Clifford Carnicom. Morgellon syndrome is identifiable when the fibers leave the body through the skin. 
that is when we see them when the body is rejecting these fibers the scarier part of this after some thought is that we all have them we all have them the worst news is if we cannot see them on ourselves it is because our body is not rejecting them they are according to Sophia Smallstorm and Clifford Carnicom tubules with hollow insides when they are cultured they produce colonies of filaments some of the fibers are tracking mechanisms did you know Th this is what gets me folks they have tracking devices on these fibers that's that's an that that really uh, that is really something forget the argument about microchipping it's already here some of the tracking mechanisms are smaller than the eye of a small needle and some I am convinced are nanoparticle sized this comes under the heading of smart dust we are all breathing smart dust, all of us. The nanofibers we are discussing here are self-unpacking and self-replicating once they are inside your body. They self-replicate, folks. All of this, may I remind you, is being brought to us under the umbrella of saving us from global warming and solar flares. An army of pilots is dropping this stuff on us by the ton in the name of saving us from solar flares. This is a tracking fiber. Welcome to the new internal world order. Tracking fiber. What has any of this hijacking of our bodies got to do with global warming? We are starting to understand that we need to stop listening to that nonsense and realize what is being done to us. Because we are being made into entities that resonate with signals sent at us, because we are being invaded by these nanoparticles in smart dust it is impossible to ignore the fact that we are being made into changed and controlled entities this is truly the definition of transhumanism not building a better or healthier human our bodies are already perfect our body's natural state is health we have been convinced that we are broken when we are not Engineered Biologicals, Category 3, Desiccated Dried Red Blood Cells. This is in the air we breathe now, right now. Perhaps this is some old home remedy of which I have been blissfully unaware. Well, these have been identified absolutely as human red blood cells, but have been engineered in some way to be preserved. The material showing up in the unidentifiable fibers look like bacteria is as indestructible as the forms of cellular life that withstand extremes of pressure and temperature and are self-replicating like the complex cellular life that make up animals and human beings just understanding how we have been modified to resonate to outside frequencies should be enough to set the world's understanding on fire just hearing about the desiccated red blood cells should be enough to make us put the global warming solar flare line in the rubbish bin where it belongs welcome to the new world fiber they and that means us as well as them are building controllable directable humans they are building entities they can invade make ill torture even kill remotely slaves this is going on all over the world this is the Pandora's box I opened three years ago when a van ran over my mother as she walked to church on a Sunday morning it all goes back to the hybrid corporate military machine and their handlers for there are levels above them rest assured for me it all goes back to the moment when thousands of blackbirds plummeted dead to the earth for no reason we can see with our eyes this is geoengineering folks make no mistake this is geoengineering
When I started writing these articles for Veterans t Today, I wrote that I would never tell you a story that was an exercise in hand-wringing. I will not do that today. The earth is mighty. The earth can do much to heal herself if we allow her to do so unmolested. That's job one. Right on the heels of that, the cessation of all aerosol spraying should come bioremediation. Let us save our children, our families, our neighbors. This is tough material. I understand that. Raise consciousness with us. Gather the facts and give them to the people you know who respond to data. Then let them run with it. Present others with the story of Christina, the daughter of the woman who was run over, and her compatriot, Tim Verzit, the fire bomber pilot who took on the madness in The Sun Thief. Christina's story is absolutely true, for it is my story. However you can do it best, inform yourself right now and start spreading the word. That, I promise you, is what they are most afraid of, for there are billions of us and a handful of them. However, time is of the essence. Do it now, whatever it is. All right. This is a tracking fiber, and it is in smart dust, which everyone is breathing into their bodies right now. These self-replicate. They are not in the natural world. They are created. Aside from all of the other aluminum and barium and so forth, desiccated red blood cells in the material that's floating into the atmosphere that we are all breathing in every day. Think about it. We breathe it in every single day. Arsenic, cadmium, mercury, fluoride, and lithium. Red blood cells. Sulfur dioxide, which kicks off the oxygen, it says. And they're tracking us with nanoparticle fibers. RFID chip, there you are. It's in the fibers, folks. Cotton candy, death, frankenclouds. It's a slow kill program. And it only means one thing. It's poisoning us. And your children. And your family. We have to do something about this, folks. Put the pressure on everybody you know to stop this from going on. We have to stop it as soon as possible. This is again by Kara St. Louis, columnist. She's at the top of your uh, screen there. It says part one. There will be a part two, I would uh, imagine. And if she puts it up, I will definitely put out a video on it. And she gets all the credit. I don't take credit for any of the content. Please do your own research into this. I know it was long. This is one of the longer videos I've done. But I read this for the visually impaired, for folks that are on Androids, cell phones. And for those of you who would rather listen to a video instead of reading the article yourself, there you are, folks. I provided the information for you. It's up to you to decide what to do with the information. Thank you for your patience and time. Thank you for watching the video. Please stay safe. Pink out.